Welcome everyone to uh, Cavern's uh, Friday afternoon webinar, uh, GDPR Ready, a 60-day action plan. Uh, we're still waiting for some people to come online, so we'll start in about 60 to 90 seconds. Welcome everyone to Catherine's Friday afternoon webinar, GDPR Ready, a 60-day action plan. We'll start in about 20 seconds. Welcome everyone to Catherine's Friday afternoon webinar, GDPR Ready, a 60-day action plan. And what we'll be looking at today is what you can do over the next 60 days until May 25th when it takes effect to ensure your technical controls. I have with me today BG, or Bragesh Goyal, who's our recently arrived VP of Engineering, but he brings to the company over 20 years of background in the cloud space, and especially the hybrid cloud space. While he was at Oracle, he in fact defined the term enterprise grid computing, which those of us in the know now call the cloud. So BG, thank you very much for joining me this afternoon. Thank you, Dave. Thanks for having me. And just logistics, uh, send questions to us. We'll have a short Q&A at the end of the uh, presentation. There's more information on our website, and we've also uploaded an infographic to the uh, Bright Talk platform. And without any further ado, I'll turn it over to BG. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on uh, what part of the world you are right now, or when, depending on when you watch uh, this webinar. Did you know that uh, in 60 days on May 25th, the, the GDPR would become effective and every enterprise in the world would be bound by GDPR uh, regulations? Did you know, do you know what is GDPR? G, you know, most of us know and most, you know, the, the amount of data breaches that have been happening has, has been always on the has been on the rise. You know, the, if you see the number of attacks and the breaches that happened in 2014, and compare that 2015, then to 2016, 2017, they're constantly increasing. And 2018 began with you know the Spectre and Meltdown vulnerability, and there are more attacks that happened in 2018. So it's it's and what GDPR does. All of us know that it is important to protect our data. GDPR uh, makes that, provides guidelines and makes and provides stringent requirements and sometimes very, very onerous requirements on corporations to, to protect the data that they own of their customers, of their employees, of their uh, vendors and people they do business with. Uh, we, in this webinar, our intent is to navigate through these GDPR requirements and especially help you on things that you should do to be compliant with GDPR. Uh, well, one, uh, one last thing I would also point out is GDPR is not just a guideline. It has huge fines if a uh, foreign enterprise that does not comply uh, with, uh, with GDPR. While GDPR provides you with all these uh, 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 requirements, it does not provide you with any prescriptive guidance, it does not have any certification, while you know, it forces that corporations and CISOs to, to enforce GDPR. And again, in this webinar, our intent is to help you put together a plan and guide you so that you can be uh, GDPR compliant.
So, what what's the impact of GDPR? You know, as I was mentioning earlier, any data that you keep, the data that you keep for yourselves, your customers, your vendors, your employees, including the places that they access their data from, the IP addresses, medical information, email addresses, every all of this data is covered under GDPR, and you need to protect not just protect the thing that you got to do for that data that we'll cover in the subsequent slides uh, that uh, 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 that you need to do with that data. So what are the key changes that are required uh, to uh, protect that data and to comply with GDPR? It, the, these things, they fall in four categories. Uh, what we call personal privacy, which, uh, which talks about the various uh, the 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 data the, that you know, the data that you collect from different individuals, you have to uh, provide certain rights to that data to the individuals whose data ha that you have collected. So those individuals have right to access their data and to correct any incorrect information that you may have about those individuals. The second thing is about controls and notifications. So this is where how you keep their data, protect their data, and do notifications in case things happen. So these, this category talks about the technical controls and the things that you do to protect that data that you got. The third thing is the policies. You got to be very transparent about uh, how you are managing that data. Clear notice about how you're collecting it, how you're processing it, and how you're managing this data, and how you're using that data. And lastly, it's all about IT and training. As we talk about subsequent, the subsequent slides, almost everyone in your organization is impacted by GDPR. And, it, and, and what things they need to do to protect all this data. And we, and we will talk about the various uh, things that you've got to do so that you are, you got to do various things to train all your employees uh, so that they could protect, uh, they could protect and then comply with the GDPR. So who are the various stakeholders in the organization uh, that are impacted by GDPR? So as you would see as I'm building this slide, almost everyone in the organization is impacted. You know, there's a CIO who is responsible for maintaining, uh, the, to comply to GDPR, and enabling and enforcing GDPR. You have your CISOs, because CIOs look at the CISOs to uh, to provide the privacy and protection and, and compliance to GDPR. You have your uh, uh, customer success, uh, the, any, pers any team that interacts with the customers, vendors, uh, employees uh, are impacted. Uh, all the marketing, all the, if you're collecting customer information and using it for marketing purposes, all, all, all of that, they, they're impacted. Your, your interactions with vendors, a lot of your data is sitting with your the vendors you do business with, in certain cases, you're sharing that even the customer data with those vendors, so them, so the procurement who needs to interact and put policies in place, and then lastly, the legal team. So all these guys are impacted. And if you see what's happening in the world with, with all the security threats, the data breaches, and now with GDPR, what we feel is that there is an increasing need at the enterprises for the role of a data protection officer. And it's, and it's, it's his or her role to ensure that you have proper policies in place and as an enterprise you're taking all the proper actions to do the variety of things. These are all excellent guidelines, uh, very onerous ones, but excellent guidelines that would help you in not only meeting GDPR but ensuring that you are taking the right actions to uh, put a shield or to prevent from future attacks. So what, what does it mean? What does GDPR mean for your data? And this is a slide that we got from Microsoft. Um, so it's, so it, it talks about three key things. First are the controls. You, know, you need to have stricter controls on how you store that data and how you use that data. Number two, it's about the governance. It's about what kind of governance policies you have play in place at your enterprise to 
ensure from people and process viewpoint the protection of this data. And lastly, you need to have improved data policies in place that, you know, that there are certain legal requirements that you're bound by because of GDPR. So you need to put together you know, the proper framework the, uh, and the policies for interactions and respond to things. So that's the, the policies to, uh, uh, and, and to, to deal with legal matters. So as you look at these things, the first thing to think about is where is my customer data? And, and, and it's, as you look at uh, this data because the GDPR and all the other regulations that are in place, you need to, you, you need to constantly think through about that, what, what data you have, where do you have this data, so that you could take specific actions to comply with not only GDPR, but a lot of the other cyber security insurance readiness requirements, HIPAA, PCI, FINRA, SOX, and a variety of other uh, regulations that you're, you're, you need to comply to, uh, because you're, in today's enterprise, almost every enterprise is bound by one or the other compliance requirements especially when it comes to customer and business data. So if you look at, so the, this is, these are all the requirements, right? I mean, these are the things that you need to conform to. These are needs you need to, to comply. But let's see how many of the enterprises in the U.S. are, are ready uh, for GDPR. And if you, if you do, a, there was a survey that was done uh, for the GDPR readiness. And what we found was 50% of the customers consider GDPR to be a top priority. Now, if you look at that 50% of those uh, enterprises, and you see of those 50% of the enterprises, 75% of those have budgeted 1 million or more to comply with GDPR requirements. So, so what it translates to is GDPR is critical for them, and they are set aside significant budget to meet GDPR. But if you see how many of them are actually, how many of them actually feel they're ready, that percentage is quite small. So even though these 75% of these organizations have budgeted a million or more, of that 75%, only 30% consider themselves to be GDPR ready. And then, if you see this chart, large percentage of the U.S. funds are not even ready for GDPR. If you, you know, it's like, and it's, and it impacts everyone, almost every enterprise, and carries massive fines, million dollars or more, if you don't meet those requirements. We, we are here to help you. We are here to, in this seminar, now I'm going to dig into what are the key elements of GDPR and what kind of things you need to do specifically on the technology end to comply with GDPR. So as you look at, as with anything, there are three key pillars of three key things that you need to look at as you look at a GDPR compliance. People, process, technology. So we'll dig into those, we'll highlight what those mean, and then how we specifically as you dig into technology, what are the things you should do and how we can help you in meeting those, uh, those requirements. So the first step, if you look at GDPR, it's a four-step process. The first step is discover the data, classify the data, they classify what data is important, critical, where, where is that data stored. Then manage that data, govern you know, how you, you manage that personal data that you carry. And third is protect. That's where we're going to be focusing on, and that's where Kevin can come and help you. And we'll talk about once you've discovered and uh, figured out that data, how to protect and, and put in place proper policies to, to uh, protect your data. And lastly, there are numerous GDPR reporting requirements, and we can also talk about what the kind of things you could do, where we could do to help you in uh, doing some of the reporting for GDPR compliance. So I would not present this in detail, but I want to highlight a few things. These are the GDPR requirements as defined in the GDPR uh, uh, compliance standards, and it talks about four different sections. Discover, this is how you identify the personal critical data that you, uh, for the customers and, and people you do business with. 
Number two is manage. This talks about the various governance policies that you've got to put in place to, uh, to, from people and process viewpoint to protect that data. And last, the third element is protect. So the protect is where we come in, it, it talks about numerous controls, and we'll dig into each of those sections and specifically what we could do on the protection front to protect that data. And third, and the last is the report, where you need to keep records and, and provide the various organizations with those reports. And if you dig into the protect, the protect has the following key sections. So I, I'll read, I'll, these are the key things that as an organization you need to, uh, you need to conform to. And, and these are all the areas where we have uh, our product that covers all these, uh, all these areas. So if you don't, don't need to worry about the, once you identify the data, you know where the data is, we can come in and help you with conforming with GDPR. So these are the key things that we do as you look at Kevin to help you protect that data. The first thing is data protection of, uh, uh, of uh, and privacy by design and default, right? And, and we'll, we'll talk about the specific controls that, they, that go in in all of that and, we, uh, and how we cover it. The second element is secure personal data through encryption. So as you keep, keep writing your personal data, we want to make sure and put checks in place and controls in place to, to, uh, to encrypt some of the critical data. Third is secure personal data by leveraging security controls that uh, ensure uh, the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of personal data. The fourth is prepare for uh, detecting and responding to, to those data breaches. And the fifth is facilitating regular testing of security measures. So if you look at all of these things, there's specific requirements, a lot more details underneath each one of those things. And we have the specific controls that we implement in our product to cover all of these various elements. And we'll dig into and give examples of some of the things that we cover in our product that cover uh, these variety of uh, different controls. If you want to kind of boil it down and kind of in place of going into the gory details of each of those things, it, it boils down to five key things. First is the auditing of your personal data processing systems so that it, it ensures that all the activities on uh, the systems where you store that data are traceable at all times. So you're auditing any system that carries important data, you're auditing it. So you know exactly all the people who are accessing those systems. Number two is you know, the system that you deploy where you have all these critical data you know, they are subjected to various vulnerabilities. So for example, they may be subject to spectre and meltdown or any other vulnerability that may exist on those operating systems. So number two is to ensuring that these systems are, are uh, 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 you have uh, taken specific actions to address those software vulnerabilities. Number three is the personal data access control. So who can access those boxes? Who can access those systems? And then ensuring that putting proper place things in place that you're restricting it only to the folks who can access those, uh, those systems. Fourth is personal data security controls, monitoring uh, the various configuration settings. So you, as you have those boxes, ensuring that you are keeping those boxes compliant so that you can prevent breaches and prevent unauthorized folks from accessing it. And lastly, all the data transfer, when you're transferring all this data, especially all this critical data, you gotta make sure that you're utilizing proper security protocols, the SSLs and such, or encryption, so that nobody can tap the wire and steal that critical uh, business data, or, or customer data. So now let's dig in. So as you look at all that, those controls, all those key elements, what are the things, uh, who, where do you have all this stuff? So today, you know, the customers have had a lot of on-prem, which is on their own data center, they have a lot of these boxes. And increasingly, customers are uh, beginning to utilize all the public clouds like AWS and Azure and Google. So you've got to make sure that all those environments are protected and covered from the GDPR viewpoint. And this is exactly where we come in, and as I talked about all the controls from GDPR in the last few slides, we look at all these systems, we apply GDPR requirements to all these assets, be it on the cloud, be it on-prem, and then we, and we run those uh, 
those uh, controls to give you uh, uh, reports on your compliance readiness. And then one additional thing you need to worry about is it's not just you. Your vendors have a lot of this data as well. So you not only do you need to ensure that you are compliant, all any of your vendor who also has access to this data, they also need to be compliant to the GDPR standards. So you've got to make sure that your procurement or the teams that are working with those vendors are ensuring that your vendors are also taking necessary actions. And then we talk about the 60-day plan that you would use so that you are compliant with GDPR when it comes to May 25, May 25th, and you don't need to incur those massive fines. Now let's dig in. So what do we do? So as you look, use Kavlin, we come in, you deploy our product, and then we, we run um, as we get access, after you deploy the product and uh, you provide it sort of access to, to those systems, we will run uh, compliance uh, uh, checks against all your systems, be it on-prem, be it cloud. Once we run these checks, we produce this compliance report. So if you see this report, if you go back at the, I know the, at the bottom, it's, uh, the font is quite small, but it, the five key bullets that I talked about, which is the uh, auditing of the personal data, the ensuring of the encryption, all these, uh, the uh, protection, the, the data access controls, all those five bullets are all covered when we run the GDPR compliance uh, checks. And you know, this GDPR, this compliance checks are, are important not just for GDPR, the, you could run it on a very regular basis, not just for GDPR, maybe daily, hourly, however frequently you want it, to ensure that you are at any time compliant with GDPR. And uh, actually, not just GDPR, you're taking necessary actions from the technical viewpoint to, uh, to uh, uh, prevent uh, and to, put a, to protect from data breaches. Again, if you look at this report, you see the scores. You would see at the bottom, we also give you the remediation actions. So not only do we give you a score, once you have a score, you, you may want uh, to uh, maybe you've you, you got a score of 6 or 3, you want to increase the, uh, the compliance and maybe go to 80 or 90, and then we can tell you specific things that you could do. So we'll tell you the places where you failed on those compliance requirements, and then we'll give you remediation actions, the things that you could do to uh, comply with the, that regulatory requirement. So we'll uh, give you a detailed information about where you're failing and what remediation action you could take. And in fact, if you would like from our product, you could utilize a variety of things like AWS Lambda or Chef or something else or integration the, to uh, take remediation action. Or if you would like, you can open a ticket in Jira or ServiceNow directly from a product so that that ticket would be open for somebody else to address that, uh, that issue. So here is another, you could get these reports not only in the UI, you could download it in Excel, you could create a PDF report, and it has details about all the various things, it has details about the places uh, where you're passing, where you're failing, uh, and in fact, if you would like also the remediation action. So if you see, in uh, this slide, we really talk about what, what specific check was done, uh, what remediation action needs to happen, uh, specifically in this case for your audit control. Right? So for example, the boxes where you have critical data, you want to audit all the accesses to those boxes. And in order to audit all the access to the boxes, you've got to enable audit D service, and we ensure that it's enabled and it's configured properly, and if uh, somebody, uh, and if, if it's not, will tell you exactly what commands to run or what things to do to make it compliant. Right. Uh, and if you see, so let's, so that, that's talked about, you know, we, as we talked about three distinct things, you know, you, uh, as you want to comply with GDPR, you got to, uh, uh, you know, we talk, you, you got to identify the critical assets, you got to put proper governance policies in place, and then protect, this is where we come in, uh, once you identify that data so that you could put necessary controls in place and ensure that you're complying with GDPR, and the fourth is reporting. So we, as we show, share, we cover uh, some of that as well. Uh, specifically, we cover all the, tech, uh, all the reporting from the compliance viewpoint. There would be other additional things you may need to do to document compliance from people and process viewpoint, but with Kavrin, you're fully covered on the technical controls. 
So there are 60 days left to May, to May 25th. So what are the things you should do in the next uh, 60 days to get GDPR compliant? Very first thing is you got to identify those critical assets. Identify what, what, where, you, uh, where, where you have those uh, critical customer data. If you have not appointed a data protection officer so far, appoint someone who is responsible for the data. You know, you have CISOs, maybe somebody along with CISO or somebody in CISO's organization or CIO's organization needs to be your DPO, your data protection officer. And then, it's a, you're really assessing, it's a, this, the first stage is really assessing what is this data, where is this data. Once you are there, all the next steps we can help you. So, so first step is if you haven't done that, do this ASAP. Because you don't have many days left, you have only 60 days. Next is as you look at Calvin, we will come in, we can help you in running all these reports and give you exactly where you stand. We'll tell you your GDPR compliance score, we'll tell you what policies you're conforming to, what you're not conforming to, and then you could, uh, we can define you, provide you with actions you could take to start complying with, uh, with those uh, uh, GDPR compliance controls. So once you have done that, you know, by April 25th or somewhere along, along that vicinity, at least you know, get, get calved in and run those, uh, those audits, your GDPR checks, GDPR controls, so that you know exactly where you stand in terms of your GDPR readiness. And next step is once you've identified, uh, with our help hopefully, uh, what those, um, where you're falling short, you could take uh, remediation actions uh, to remediate and be ready. And come May 25th, I think you have, uh, you know, if you engage and take, in, take the action right now, you have sufficient time to take those uh, actions and then uh, and be ready for, for GDPR. And, and in fact, once you've done that, you could be in regular compliance uh, with, uh, with GDPR and keep it, keep it running, not just for the GDPR, but also to ensure uh, prevention uh, of data breaches at your organization. So that's all we could do for, for, the, for you on the GDPR side. But let us give you a brief background about Kevin and ourselves, right? So as you know, you yourself, I think, um, uh, the most of our most of the customers in the world are live in the hybrid world. You know, uh, more enterprises have had their data on prem. They have had their systems on prem for a long, long time. The last five years, there has been massive adoption of public cloud. You know, AWS, Azure, Google, you know, others. So now it's all about the hybrid world. You have data on your uh, on prem on your inside your data center on the cloud with your vendors, and it's all about uh, you know, preventing not just uh, uh, protecting data on prem, but across uh, across your hybrid world. So you need to have a a solution in place that not just looks at one or the other, but provides you with a holistic view across your hybrid enterprise world. Right? So across your on prem and off prem, you need to get the holistic view of not just your operating systems, but your cloud configuration, so that any place which is open can, can be protected and you know the security and compliance uh, for all those assets uh, on a regular basis. It's not real time. So as you, as you look at those, um, again, as a, the three key things, you, know, you, you have to make sure that you're protecting all your operating systems, all your servers, all your assets, be it on, be it on prem, be it on the cloud. And then as you look at your cloud, you need to make sure that your cloud is configured appropriately in terms of not just for, 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 for the GDPR requirement. Number, as you increasingly, you know, enterprises move towards DevOps, you gotta make sure that you have visibility into your DevOps environment. You're not blindsided by your DevOps. Uh, and you know about the security parts of your DevOps environment and in fact, do necessary integrations with your DevOps pipeline to, uh, to ensure that you uh, stay compliant with GDPR or any of the security requirement that you may have. And then you gotta make sure in real, as things happen in your enterprise, you know, we live in a, live in a very dynamic and agile world, you gotta make sure your uh, GDPR and security compliant uh, on a regular basis. So maybe run these checks regularly you know, uh, daily, out, you know, every, every few hours um, 
to ensure that you um, you your GDPR compliant all the time. APG, hey, thank thank you very much. And uh, do you have any uh, closing statements or any closing observations based on you know what you've done in the past? We have another minute or so. Yeah, you know I think it's uh, we live in a very very interesting world. You know we live in a, such a fast agile uh, agile world. And, um, and and very very competitive things are happening really really fast. The world is hybrid. World is heading towards DevOps in a big way. If you're not already there, and and in such a fast pace changing requirement, you know, GDPR is uh, is quite onerous and imposes uh, uh, really uh, uh, onerous requirements in all enterprises. They're all good because they're important to prevent your data breach given the number of data breaches that are rising. But get ready, guys. I think it's uh, you, you. You need you have 60 days left for GDPR. It's, it probably impacts almost every enterprise in the world. Takes actions for not just for GDPR, but to maintain uh, and protect your enterprise uh, the, on a continuous basis. So uh, get ready. Okay. Thank you. And thank you everyone for uh, joining us this afternoon. I realize we had a couple technical glitches. We'll clean them up before posting. And once again, if you have any questions, we're sort of out of time on the Bright Talk platform, but please uh, email them to us at uh, Cavern and we'll re respond individually. So thank you again.